Hey friends, happy Monday, happy April 20th. Um, hope you all had a good weekend. Um, love that it's starting to get warm out. Um, hopefully we can incorporate some outdoor, uh, some outdoor activities in our training and get a break from the snow. Um, I think like this time last year, I remember coming up here to look at apartments and it was like an eight inch snowstorm. So maybe that's normal, uh, but hopefully that's, hopefully that's done now. Um, no one is on this call currently, so I'm going to not necessarily answer questions, um, no particular questions to answer, but I will go over the workout still. Um, I will go over points of performance. I will go over um, common faults, and uh, then I'll just kind of upload things from there. Um, if someone does join in, then we'll kind of have them just jump right in or maybe even quickly start over. Um, but so here's what we have for today. I'm going to go ahead and share the screen. It seems to be a good option for people so far um, and go over the workout. All right, so you should be able to see the screen there. Um, I'm going to, we'll just break it down one piece at a time. I'll talk about the weightlifting and then demo that and then I'll talk about the Metcon and then demo that. Um, for the weightlifting, um, pretty straightforward there. We have uh, five minutes of as many reps and good reps as possible. And we'll talk about what that's going to look like. Um, as many good reps of renegade rows as possible. Um, a renegade row is basically you're in a plank position with, we're looking at a, a, a single dumbbell or a single object of sorts and basically doing a one arm row. We'll demo that in a second. As far as the weight on that, are if you have um rather than worry about like rx and scaled let's think of this in terms of how the weight that you would normally use in a workout if you have the weight you normally use in a workout which would be like rx for you um the, we're thinking of swapping uh switching arms every five reps so five reps with one arm switch five reps with another if the object that you have for, for these rows are, or if the weight that you have at home is heavier, then we can switch less or less often. If the, the weight that you have is lighter than you would normally use in a workout, um, thinking from like a, if you, it was a workout involving dumbbell snatch or maybe even like dumbbell thrust or something like that. If the weight that you have is lighter than you would normally use if you were at the gym, doing a dumbbell snatch or dumbbell thruster, then rather than switch every five arms, let's, let's push that a little bit um, a little bit longer and maybe we're switching every eight reps, every, every switching arms, every 10 reps. Um, so here's what a running gate row looks like. I'll demo from a couple different angles and put like a flight attendant there, look for the exits on your left and right. Um, I'll demo from a couple different angles, go over points performance and then things that uh, we come and see as faults. So like I said, we're looking at basically what's a push uh, in a plank position and then a row in with one arm and then the next. So from this angle here, what I want to do is I want to keep my feet no closer than shoulder width. If you want to go a little bit wider on one or both, that's fine. While keeping everything in a nice straight line here, I want to row with one arm. So we're here and row, five reps, eight reps, three reps, depending on our weight, then we'll switch. If you only have one dumbbell, that's totally fine. That just looks like that. I don't know if you can see that on the screen, that just looks like that. From the other side, simple as that. Now a couple, um, three common faults that I see in this. One of them is um, when we row, we open up our hips too much. So what that would look like is when I'm rowing, I'm turning. The other one is similar, but open up the shoulder. When I'm rowing, I'm here. Uh, and then the other one is, I'll show you from this angle, only getting a half record. On these rows, we're not coming straight up, we're coming back. 
So what, what that would look like is coming back, not coming up. So bringing your elbow more to your hips. Um, so that's five minutes of as many reps as possible in that. Um, pretty straightforward then. And then for our Metcon, we have a quick little couplet, couplet um, kind of quick little couplet. For this, we only need the one dumbbell. Um, if you have two and you want to use two, you can, especially if it's a little bit lighter. So what I have here is a little bit lighter than I would use in a workout. So I could use two for the, uh, for the devil's press. That doesn't necessarily change our reps though. Again, we're at home, um, kind of think of the stimulus that we're looking for in a workout. And then adjust what you have accordingly. We have just been signed out. I don't know if we're still recording or not. Hopefully we're still going. I think someone else just signed into Zoom. Um, so hopefully you can still see me. Sorry for that mm, little interruption there. And we'll go back to the screen sharing if we can. Um, hopefully this works. Okay, so we need to back in with the Metcon. Um, we're looking at 10 rounds for time of a couplet of single arm devil's press and 10 goblet squats. Um, devil's press, for those of us that have not done this before, it's like a burpee to, with a shoulder to overhead. Not to be confused with something like a man -maker. So single arm, I'm gonna angle the screen down just a little bit more. Um, single arm, burpee, jump, and then going overhead. Go back. Burpee, jump, Finishing overhead. Um, something to really look for on this one, and this side angle will show it the best. First of all, when we uh, make sure that we have that dumbbell wide enough out so our chest can hit the ground on that burpee. What we want to do though is when we jump, we want our feet to be behind the weight that we have. That way we can swing it back and use a little bit of momentum. Think of like a kettlebell swing here. So we're looking at on that burpee, jump up or step up. But as you can see here, the weight's in front. That way I can come get that momentum rather than being to go straight up with it. Um, that would be more of like a strict, strict shoulder to overhead. Um, otherwise, within the devil's press, um, like I said, just make sure that our grip, whether it's two or one, especially if it's two, make sure the uh, the dumbbells are wide enough for our, our chest to get all the way to the ground. If you have a barbell, instead of goblet squats, we're looking at front squats. Um, scaled weight on that would be 95, 65. RX would be 135 and 95. Um, normal things on, on the squats, just make sure that we're getting full depth. Especially at home, this is a great time to really reinforce that proper uh, front front squat um, or the proper depth on these front squats or goblet squats. All right, so hopefully you can still see the screen, even though I um, swapped to a different a different window. Uh, this is our warm up. We'll go over this and then I'll um, upload this. I'm not going to necessarily keep a clock, uh, but what we're looking at is. Option one in this is if you don't have a runner, rower, skier, or something like that, uh, and you don't want to go outside. So this would be option one, get 10 push-ups in from your toes, from your knees, either way, that's okay. And then we are going to do 60 seconds of jumping jacks, 60 seconds of a plank hold to prep us for those, uh, those renegade rows. 
and then 60 seconds of a squat hold. No, no weight, just folding at the bottom, chest up, knees out. You can't see, but my knees are past outside of my toes. The chest is up. Hips are at, uh, below my knees. Um, so 60 seconds of each of those, and then 40 seconds of each of those, and then 20 seconds of each of those, and then 10 more push-ups at the end. Option two for your warm-up would be um, to just, to, if you do have a um, rower or a bike, or if you want to go outside, just move for three minutes. Um, this takes the place of the jumping jacks in, the, uh, in option one. Uh, so the, the goal here is just get your heart rate up. We're not necessarily worried about how far or how many calories or anything like that, just going for three minutes. Then we're going into those 10 push-ups again, and then 60, 40, 20 of only the plank and the squat hold. So again, we're taking the jumping jacks out. And then 10 more push-ups. Um, so those are our two options for the warm-ups, depending on now that it's getting a little bit warmer out, um, relatively speaking. If you do want to head outside, those would be one of the uh, option two could be an option for you there. Um, last thing, I didn't say it for the for the uh, second part. We'll put a 20 minute time cap on that. So uh, what you'll need for the workout is a single dumbbell. Um, and that's about it. Um, if you have a barbell, load that up for front squats and that single dumbbell. But otherwise, this should be one that you can do with really minimal equipment. Um, as always, if you don't have a dumbbell, just something that you, something heavy that you have at home. Um, let any of us coaches know if there's something that you, or a way that you want to scale this. Um, I'll kind of keep my phone by me. Um, so if you need to send me a message or something after I upload this, um, if you weren't able to join the call, I'll be pretty responsive for the first half of the morning here. Um, otherwise, good luck, get after it, and we'll see you next time.